Hey everybody, it's Muscle Car Campy. We got a wild one for you today. It's a reproduction of the car Mickey Thompson built in 1962, a Pontiac Tempest Le Mans that won both the Winter Nationals and the World Finals that year, 1962. And if you don't remember, because you probably don't, those were the two big events on the NHRA schedule back then. So this car did a clean sweep. In 1962 with the Winter Nats, Hayden Prophet drove it, and this is the trim that the car sits in today. Long before the GTO was a gleam in John DeLorean's eye, factory supercars were burning rubber on street and strip alike. Cars like the 409 Chevy, the 406 Fords, 413 Mopars, and 421 Super Duty Pontiacs were battling it out every weekend from coast to coast. Whether these were at sanctioned events before tens of thousands of fans or on moonlit back roads in rural towns, American muscle was a raging phenomenon. In 62, stock and super stock cars were packing fans into drag strips. These classes were comprised of the hottest factory combinations you could get. But you know how racers are, they always want to go faster, do something different. And that's where this comes in. No sports fans, there never was a 421 in a Tempest or a Le Mans back in the day. These cars were supposed to be really nice small economical cars with a hint of sportiness you had a four-cylinder engine available and a six-cylinder but you definitely couldn't get the 421 super duty well guess what's under the hood of this one the afx class was created for cars just like this what's really cool is under the car you can see the uh, headers have a slight opening in them uh, he must have forgot to bolt them completely together uh, as you go back uh, that was a joke by the way as you go back, you can see the ladder bars that Thompson and his crew fabricated. Um, the tires, of course, Mickey Thompson tires, you can't uh, get away from that. Um, this thing is just a purpose-built race car that's fortunately you're able to drive on a street. All right, we're here with the owner of this car, Pontiac historian and a legend in a Pontiac community, Don Keefe. Don owns Poncho Perfection Magazine, and Don, you saw this car many years ago. It wasn't the right time for you to buy it. No, no, unfortunately it wasn't, but uh, you know, good things come to those who wait. Um, I saw this car for the first time in person in 2012 at the POCI convention in St. Charles, Illinois, and I spent about an hour just looking at all the details and just just kind of drooling all over it and um, I met up with the owner Mike Marsh and talked with him for a little while about the car and just told him how much we uh, uh, how much I enjoyed it and how much I appreciated the amount of work that went into it and uh, I Mike had not built uh, the car it was actually built by George Canevelbard in the early 1990s so I was familiar with the car in that, in that respect. George is a very, uh, very highly regarded historian and uh, Super Duty collector. So uh, fast forward to uh, last February or so, uh, we had, uh, George had moved to Orlando and uh, our contributor Dave Benaskowitz uh, had shot a couple of his cars for Poncho Perfection magazine. One was a 1963 Grand Prix and the other was a 1960 Bonneville. So uh, in, in that time period, George and I had gotten to be pretty good phone buddies, and uh, uh, I told him uh, one day he called me to get some extra copies of the February issue that his uh, uh, Bonneville was in, and, he, and I told him, I said, you know, George, I'm kind of a fan of yours. And he said, really? How, how so? And I said, well, I, I uh, told him the story about how I'd seen the, uh, the Tempest at that uh, convention so many years before, and uh, he said to me, he goes, you know, I just talked to the owner, he's a good friend of mine. He said, uh, it's for sale. And he, then he said, are you interested? And I said, yeah, but kind of with a caveat. At the time, we were just getting ready to close on our house in Clearwater, and I didn't want to do anything to screw that up, you know, I would never live that down. No. So I told him, I said, look, I said, once we get on the other side of the closing and everything, you know, I'll get in touch with you and let you know if we're gonna be able to, to swing it. And uh, he said, okay, and uh, we closed on the house. Everything worked out great. And uh, I called him and I said, or texted him rather, and I said, uh, I'm ready when you are. And uh, he gave me the phone number of uh, Mike Marsh and I, uh, I called him and we uh, worked a deal out on the phone. Uh, 
Well, you know, you close on a house, you need something to put in the well, garage. Well, yes, it is. A, we do have a two-car garage. So I this thought, isn't a very big car. It's so not. So it doesn't take up a lot of space. So it, it's, it's very practical. Now, this isn't just a cool car that has a 421 in it. This is a really precise, exact replica of yes. the car that Hayden Prophet drove to victory. And it was, I believe, Lloyd Cox who drove it in... Uh, to victory at the U.S. Nationals? Yes, that is correct. And uh, this car is correct right down to the correct cylinder heads. It's got the McKellar number 11 uh, mechanical lifter camshaft. It's got the correct uh, Carter AFB carburetors. They recreated the headers that were built for this, uh, for this swap. Every detail was just painstakingly uh, uh, taken into account. Uh, even the spark plug wires are correct 421 Super Duty pieces. So it's it's very much a time machine in terms of uh, authenticity and originality and all that. What a trip. Now this car has a three-speed transmission. I assume, now I don't know much about these cars, they didn't come with a rope drive uh, drivetrain setup. Uh, the story goes that uh, Mickey Thompson actually dismantled one of his 62 Super Duty cars to uh, uh, to build this car and so the drivetrain came out intact and that included the uh, uh, the engine it had a Borg Warner T85 three speed uh, manual in it because Hayden Prophet didn't like shifting three times he only liked shifting twice and with the amount of power the thing put out it was probably a little easier to get the power to the ground so uh, so from there, it also had the uh, the 62 rear end, which they uh, narrowed, and uh, uh, the rear ends uh, in Oldsmobile and Pontiacs from 57 to 64 are pretty much the same thing in terms of uh, uh, the uh, the actual uh, uh, gearing, housing, all that stuff. Um, this particular car has a 1957 rear end in it, which is identical from a, a, a visual standpoint, but it's, it was a little narrower and it was just the right size for this uh, for this chassis. And you know, when you started it before, man, it is a beast. It, oh, it, it just absolutely shakes the windows, rattles yeah. the cages. It's it's just perfect for the street. It, it, yes, yes, and it gets all of about four or five miles per gallon. And of course, you you need racing fuel for this thing. So what's uh, the compression? Is it about twelve to one? I would it's, guess. It, I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's somewhere between eleven and a half and a little over twelve. Mm -hmm. So you can hear every exhaust, every power uh, stroke uh, when this thing's idling. It's. Uh, it's got a lot of squeeze there. This isn't a car you really worry about miles per gallon. No. It's, it's more about the smiles S per mile. S yes. Well, Don, what do you say you close the hood and we go out for a little ride in this thing? That sounds like fun. Come on, Don, what do you think? We're some gas. Let's do it. all the way back that had to be a lot of fun driving it on a drag strip you put your one two shift you got to go up instead yeah, of the traditional exactly. but i guess back in the day those guys were kind of used to goofy stuff like that they were real men back then that's true Hayden Prophet was the only uh, driver from the Golden Age there who won in Pontiacs, Fords, Chevrolet.
of course I had a six speed. I had, had two overdrive, overdrives. Yeah. No such luck with this guy. Sharing this car with Muscle Car Campy and his viewers. This is an absolutely fantastic vehicle. I really it's, appreciate it. It really is a bucket list deal for me. This is something I never thought I'd be in a position to ever own. And uh, the whole thing came together. And with the support of my uh, lovely fiance, Ann, we were able to pull the trigger and everything just worked out beautifully. So uh, no. it's as much hers it is, as it is mine. Oh, I, I don't even want to get out. I just kind of want to sit here, uh, especially since that big fan is blowing in my window. Yeah. Uh, but I do, um, I'm amazed by this car. It's, it is a, really a throwback to a bygone era when men were men and, you know, technology, you know, a lap belt was your safety equipment. Yeah, this is as good as it got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we probably didn't even wear it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so thanks again. And uh, everybody who's watching Muscle Car Campy, be sure to hit the uh, subscribe button, ring the bell so you get a notification every time a new video goes live. We got some really cool stuff coming up. So thanks for checking us out. Don, uh, good luck with your Poncho Perfection magazine Thank and you all very the much. other uh, publications and clubs you're involved with. I'm a busy guy right now, yeah, doing uh, Impala News for the National Impala Association and course of Communicate for the Corvair Society of America. And I'm also writing a book on the history of Pontiac drag racing. So, yeah, my, my dance card's pretty full right now, but uh, life is good. Well, if you need anybody to help you drive this car to keep it exercised, I'll be more than happy to come across the bay from my house and exercise it for you. That would be a lot of fun for me. So yeah, Absolutely. I'm just a giving guy. Uh, you, you, you are. You always were. I'll always even were. put the gas in. Fantastic. Okay, now we got a deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks, Thanks for checking out Muscle Car Campy, and we'll see you next time.